This is episode number 376 of the Inner Fight Podcast. This is the region's number one health and fitness podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Smith, and with me... Andre Houdet. Whoa! It's <laughs> so whoa, loud. Whoa, hey, it's hey, so hey, loud. Hey, hey. We should have tested that out. I don't know why it's so whoa. loud. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we'll keep the introduction the same. That shows that it's real. That shows that we're live. Almost. Welcome back to the show, folks. Thank you for your support. Last week, we gave away three bags of Smith Street Paleo goodies. Why? Why did we do that? Because people subscribe and rate and review our show. Oh, yes, they do. They subscribe, they rate, they review, and we give them food. It is that easy. Thank you for all your support. That's why our podcast is flying up the charts. The Health and Fitness Show. Today, with... Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> Very requested guest. This is bullshit. Apart from the, uh, what, 375? I can't remember the last 375, one. 375, the one last with weekend? Shadia last yeah. week, yeah, and then everyone, 374. And then everyone just wanted Matt Jones on his own. Or with you two, that's what they said. Mate, Ooh. welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good, good to be on here. Good show last week with Shadia. Yeah, we just got to pretty much talk about wrestling. and Yeah. yeah. Didn't I think it's very realize that that was your, one of your interests? Nah, not really. But Is it? Then again, when I think back, oh, I loved it. Really? It so yes. Who's yeah. your favorite? Uh, Undertaker. Really? Yeah. Trey, were you? Did you <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went through this, but he knew one, and I was quite happy. Hulk about Hogan, it. that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 Hulk Hogan, filthy about dash. It. From MTV, that's all I know. Yeah. There's, um, wasn't there a documentary on Hulk Hogan and how basically he got really screwed up after that? And yeah, that was. I can't remember what the documentary's called. No, Did it have that powerlifter guy in it as well? Might have done, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah super interesting. Love to watch. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Love to watch a bit of documentary. So, WWE. F as it started out, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, back mate. in the day when Dre yeah. was uh, not even born. Yeah. Um, he was here. He was it's not long ago. You don't yeah. remember it as WWF, eh? Mate, I've never I don't even <laughs> watched wrestling my whole life. Really? But it the, was a phenomenon, mate. I recognized, I, I think I saw wrestling for the first time, like, just from watching MTV, yeah. where Hulk Hogan had a series. Really? Yeah. That's it. And then my oh. wrestling is, like, not even known. <laughs> There we go. Like Back like. on to this show then. 374, <laughs> Jonesy, you had a chance to chat to Shadia, and obviously I wasn't available. We want to wish her all the very best. She's very soon off to the States, and be sure to follow her. Yeah, Jonesy, I don't want to kick this off. A couple of quick shots. Sure. Uh, one one really low blow here, and, and, and I know what you're going to say, but let's do it. What's yeah. your thoughts on uh, Scotland nearly beating New Zealand oh, last yeah, week, yeah, the other yeah. weekend? Yeah, because I, I took the morning classes, and I knew yeah. they were playing the night before, but yeah. it was late, and I yeah. thought they we were going to kick their ass, you know. But in a humble kind of a way. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, uh, Ian came out to me, and he's Scottish, which I didn't realize. Yeah. He's Scottish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he was like, oh, you, it was close. And I was <laughs> like, oh, no, have we lost? <laughs> have we lost? <laughs> and then he told me the result. And then, you know, hey, I think it's really good for Scotland rugby. They yeah, obviously yeah, played really well. Um, it's quite yeah. interesting because they've been terrible for so long. Yeah. And well, now they're <laughs> getting close to victories, and, like, they celebrate them as victories. Exactly, mate. So I was, um, I was kind of happy to hear that we won, but yeah. that it was a really good close game. So there we so go, New Zealand. Yeah, Might as well I mean, talk about England rugby whilst we're here. Yeah, that was that was twenty one well at the time of recording this. Obviously, we're a little bit ahead on the recording. Sorry about that, folks. Just like to be organised because Dre takes extended periods of vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Once <Well>. every third year. <laughs> You've only been every here for third one year. year. Come on. Come on. It's like we need to record <laughs> loads of shows because I'm going on leave. But Eddie Jones, twenty two games in charge, twenty one victories. Okay. Yeah. Not bad, huh? He's an interesting looking character as well, isn't he? <laughs> Doesn't look like a mono bro. <laughs> All squeaks a little bit, and with a little lift. <laughs> if you saw his face, Dre, you'd know what. You know yeah. who Eddie Jones is, eh? Me. <laughs> There's two things that I know about. Yeah. Number one, wrestling. wrestling. <laughs> and number two is rugby. Ah. That's the first question. That was from uh, that was from Ian. Mate, one yeah. w- an- another question. We'll hit this before we maybe jump sure. into some things a little bit more serious. Yeah. Quite a few people want to know where do you yeah. get your socks from. I better pull my socks up as we. <laughs> what's Mate, the, the uh, what's the key here? The true answer is I don't buy socks. Really? Yeah. People this is people bring them in for sponsors. me. Sponsors. Yeah, private sponsors. They present them to me. Really? Yeah, my latest one is from uh, Robert Jones and it's got pictures of steaks on it and it says well done. Oh, I haven't worn those yet. I'll get them out at some stage okay. in my life. Really? Um, yeah, basically, mate. I mean, I've been over to the States a few times, and I walked past the stance shop, and yeah. okay, I bought a few pairs in. But yeah. other than that, the first uh, pair that was bought for me for, was from uh, Minhal. Oh, really? Actually, these socks I'm wearing right now, just plain just patterns. Plain. 
not just yeah, he didn't on. he didn't go like you know two yeah. all out. So Kept I thought I'd watch. And people want to know how many socks you have. Though. Yeah, there's probably about sixty three. Sixty three. Yeah, now that's a rough guess, but I'll let people know for real one time. At least, really? yeah. and there's loads that I probably haven't worn yet. <laughs> you should line them all up. And yeah, take that's a what picture. I'm gonna do. Yeah. Do you have yeah. your favorite yeah. set? Yeah, I think I do, mate. Um, or like, do you have like four or five sort of favorites on rotation? Yeah, a little bit. I go through the week where I'm like, the I like my I gave pink pattern yeah. ones. Pink pattern. Those ones, are, yeah, I quite like. Those, you quite mate. like the they're, black they're exactly the same as this. Yeah, but, um, they're pink and they're. It's that bandana pattern. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the, I get a, quite good feedback. Yeah. I get good feedback from those ones. Yeah, the I've face ones from a lot of guys and yeah. some girls that know who they are. They're like, yeah, but some people are like, who is that guy? I'm like, look, yeah. we don't need to talk. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, I've, I've noticed as well, the odd one, the black and white one, yeah, comes out yeah, yeah. at least gets, every nine days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. get yeah. confused about those. They two. get very yeah. confused. Yeah. Even kids He's get confused. confused. Mate. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's wearing them the way they are. But they actually, that's what is meant to happen. That. There's yeah. a black one and a white one, and they came like that. I didn't like get two pairs of socks and think, "Oh, I'm yeah. going to do this." Yeah. How many yeah, days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many days ahead do you kind of line up the socks? Uh, just the night before. Okay. Yeah. Just Seven nights night before. before. Just the night before, mate. I don't like doing it in the morning. <laughs> do just. you ever find it? This is this is actually a really yep. serious question. It might sound really funny. Huh? Might not. Do you ever find like you're just looking at the socks and you, you're sort of thinking about what you're going to wear tomorrow, and you're like, "Oh, does that match that? And did I wear that that day before the, this?" And you kind of just go and just go, fuck it. Screw it. Yeah, I try and have one day a week where I just like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to yeah. wear that. Some days it looks all right. Some days no one cares. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, uh, yeah. I think one day I came in and you were like, oh, no, wait, look, I'm allowed to have one day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to match necessarily. Yeah. And you were like, okay, sweet. I've seen stuff and things on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's actually why I stopped wearing longer yeah, socks. Yeah, I've been wondering about your. You yeah, just stop. I just, just mate, I just you got so I just tired got of the tired whole. of not tired, but I was like, I'm spending, I'm spending at least fifteen to thirty seconds <laughs> yes. like figuring out what color socks I'm going to wear tomorrow, and in that time, I could be doing something more productive. It so does. I'm it just going to wear quite, black yeah. socks. Time I'm pretty quick with it though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I try I just, and be quick, mate. Yeah, I, try, I was trying to be quick, and actually, I don't, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but actually, throughout all the colored T-shirts that I owned, Ooh. and I just kept. Black and uh, right. and the color that Dre's wearing, gray. Okay. And Trendsetter. A, and of course, you gave I like it. Where did you? Who did you give them to? I give them to the car wash boy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> funny. <laughs> st- I'm not sure we should talk about this on the show. I'm going to tell you this anyway. Cleared out. So we had this, like, because I've been here quite a long time. Every time, sort of, one of my friends leaves, or they they when they used to leave, they used to just drop off like a box of uh, booze bottles. Okay. You know, like they'd have a booze cabinet and they'd have like weird stuff like. A quarter bottle of whiskey left. And like, I, don't, I don't even drink whiskey. Nah. Like you know, I, I drink a couple of beers every now and then, and I drink a little bit of wine here and there. And so I never drink spirits. And we've accumulated over the time that we've been here, we've accumulated like loads of spirit bottles. And we've always been like, oh, someone will come around one day and they'll ask for a, a, a whiskey or something like that. <laughs> like no one comes around and no one asks for <laughs> a whiskey. So the other day, I said, screw it, I'm throwing away everything yes. so I kept a bottle of gin because my mum has a gin and tonic sometimes when she comes and Holly has some cooking liqueurs or something like yeah. that so I got this box and it had about 15 different bottles all like halves or quarters left and I gave it to the car wash guy nice. how happy was <laughs> he was he like <laughs> Holly's like he's probably he is not going to be washing the cars <laughs> for about two weeks so there's like 20 car wash boys with inner fight t-shirts yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. kind of colors drunk <laughs> drunk <laughs> running around sour so that man I just I, I, yeah I just went black and but there, there's another problem as well because on tomorrow I've got this November and yeah. two weeks ago I threw away my Blues. neon blue t-shirt uh, yeah. I think we can get you a discount down in the shop mate yeah, I we'll saw stop. a couple of idiots wearing blue today as well. Yeah, Sa- Pang it. savage, yeah. savage. Maybe they're was going. Blue. Maybe yeah, they're going that know. blue, and then maybe neon blue tomorrow. Yeah, I've got neon know. blue. It's supposed to be neon blue, right? Is I it? didn't or think it mattered, but yeah. Well, Better check that one, one out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the socks don't cause you too much stress anymore. Nah, That's nah, the nah. Line. They're all good, mate. It's all good. And just mainly gifts, eh? Yeah, yeah. I like generous just to put it out there. Just to put it out there, I do like really nice cars. And watches. And I love watches as well. Yeah. And I like hats as well. Okay. But, um, hats. Cool. But the Range Rovers and all that, like, I, I quite like those. You though, prefer so. a Range Rover? Yeah. yeah. Black one, yeah. Why not? Black. Mm. Black on black. Yeah. yeah. So that's the story. That's the answer <laughs> about Jonesy's 
socks, socks. basically. Mate, I think I think what we should jump into a little bit because I, I do. That's all very nice, light-hearted humour, and I think yeah. we've got a couple of other humorous ones which we'll chuck in later. But I think what people are interested in, and I think what's a great subject, is actually a little bit about your training. Yeah. You've recently moved over to what's been very cleverly sort of labeled as functional bodybuilding led by this American guy, Marcus Philly, who's yep. multiple times games athlete mm-hmm. and the teammate of Karma Bosman's, Bosman's on the Phoenix Rise when she was mm-hmm. there doing grid. And Great. he's been on the podcast. Yeah, he's also been on the podcast talking about it. Now, you are you're basically following it. Yeah, yeah. Have been. So it's, talk to us a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean... You know, going from doing, like, CrossFit, like, just typical style CrossFitting, which I still love and I still enjoy doing, but then going on to this, like, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not super, I'm not old, but I know I'm not that young anymore, so... How old are you? Thir- 35 next month. 35 next month. Yes. Yeah. So it's old compared to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So I just found that I was getting quite a lot of niggles, which I know can be pretty common. Yep. Um... And now we'll talk about it later, the future of CrossFit. But yeah. I just sort of thought, you know what? I've been seeing lots of his, his videos and yep. some interesting movements. Some are very simple movements. Some may not look that simple, but when you kind of progress them, they actually are quite simple. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. So I, I have a chat to Dre because uh, Natalie said that she'd been kind of yep. doing it and she'd been getting really good results from it. Yeah. Yep. And when I say results, I <laughs> yeah, mean... Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, like... Results, yeah, okay, looking good, okay, that's all good, but really rehabbing the body a little bit more and just being a little bit more pain-free. So, I, I think their hashtag is look good, move, move well. well. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly what it seems like this yeah. program is actually doing. Like, yeah. it's actually selling exactly what the results are. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you see these comments here, like someone says, oh, I'm going to give this a go. Look, oh, look, I haven't maxed out in ages and i maxed out today and i actually got a pb okay maybe this functional bodybuilding yep. is really good yeah um and you know i think the future with it now it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen in about i don't know five to ten years time yeah just with how people are going to you know balance their training out a little bit yeah um i think with you know with with athletes like they're not like in any sport you know they're not just bashing their bodies up all year round. Yeah. Like, I know for a fact that real top athletes, like, I don't know, like Usain Bolt, for example, he probably takes a month, maybe six weeks or so, where he just is told and forced to almost do absolutely nothing. Yeah, just to calm down. Yeah, just calm down. Yep. You know, so um, with this, yeah, I just found, like, I still got a little bit sore from it, but I didn't wake up in the morning feeling like, oh, my God, like, it you just pr- takes a little while for body to get going. Stairs. Kind of, yeah, you know. Yeah. And coaching as well. Like, I want to be able to kind of demonstrate all those fundamental movements yeah. was, I was getting to a stage where I just an air squat for example was just it was really painful on my knees right. you know I was holding I just kept that between you know my two ears yeah. <laughs> I didn't really bitch about it too much but yeah so to talk, talk to us about yeah. like okay functional bodybuilding so bodybuilding yep. people generally sort of linked to I guess the 80s and 90s Arnie big bicep buff yeah, guy yeah. so talk to us really about like what does a session look like yep. is, is it 7 days a week how long does it mm. take all this kind of stuff because that's interesting as yeah, well yeah yeah it is so about 4 or 5 days a week so it still encourages 1 or 2 rest days right um, it's still going through the full range of motion um, with all the movements there right whereas sometimes you know some bodybuilding it's kind of partial reps and all that but yeah. which has its place but I just think with it there's a lot of core like control and right. total body control so yeah. the warm-ups are really really yeah, cool yeah which i've really like to try and add into the class programming yeah you know every we'll now and then because yeah. i think it has like benefit there so sometimes the warm-up it could be like a nine minute thing sometimes it lasts you know 15 to 20 minutes but yeah, i'll tell you what i think that that's really important just it could just be like a glute activation warm-up so loads yeah, of right. movements to activate the glutes which i know i need yeah um, shoulder mobility as well, shoulder stability, loads and loads. I haven't done this many planks before in my whole life. You know, <laughs> Even like, though you watch my Insta story, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see lots of planks. I see planks. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, like some people, they do a plank and then they might not do it for like another month and it just yeah. shows that they're neglecting the basics. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? So I think that's, that's really important to do. Yeah. Um, the big movements are still in there, but you know what? A, a kind of in a nutshell a way to put it is that you know some days are heavy yeah some days are lighter 
some days you're going to move fast, some days you're going to move a little bit slower. Right. You know, but as long as there's a combination of everything, I think it contributes to you moving really well. Yeah. And then that's where it comes into getting yep. results and having a good future with it. And I guess that's kind of what we see missing in, in like the CrossFit, generalized CrossFit programming is that yeah. we have all those like full range of motion and, you know, heavy days and light days, but it's always intense and it's always, you know, fast and there's no... Yeah slowing down there's no like really going through different tempos you no. know extra yeah. time under tension you know being able to kind of expose mechanical defic- deficiencies yeah um yep. which is yeah like i've seen you do it i've seen natalie do it i've seen yeah, a course. lot of people just benefit from it and it's just crazy how such a simple you know thing bodybuilding and make like mixing a sort of a CrossFit has had so many benefits. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, yeah, I definitely think that like the future of CrossFit, like you said, will there'll be more and more and more people realizing that they need this kind of training yeah. to match their CrossFit training in order to continuously progress and stay healthy. Yeah, um, and even if like someone's not necessarily competing anymore, like just yeah. to be a better version of themselves, then I think this is a it's a wicked like an awesome method of training yeah maybe that should yeah. be a focus like that yeah. you know it's it's you don't need to compete in this sport to to excel it's no. it's okay to just focus on longevity because that yeah i think that's a trend we almost see that the people come to classes and excel well in classes they think the next stage is for them to start competing and those kind of things yeah. instead of people thinking, jump the gun a bit yeah. yeah instead of just thinking you know I just want to continuously feel better and focus on like staying healthy and yep. and unfortunately competing in at high level can will most often not be healthy. Yeah, no, you will have sure. to sacrifice Something. your health and a sort of in some sense, and your priority will now be competing and winning over longevity and over health. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah. And I don't think people realize you know that the back end of the story for, for most of the competing athletes when they see them yeah and and that's why it's awesome to see marcus philly who's a three times game athlete or five times or whatever yep. super good looking guy and super strong and and fit and he can now represent something that is not winning the crossfit games but everyone still wants to be what he is yeah definitely yeah. which is yeah. uh it's which is really athlete. really awesome it's a really good like new wave hitting yeah. hitting the fitness industry yeah i think that's a, a, one thing that's super interesting, Jonesy, what you said about the warm-ups, because, yeah. you know, I think I think sometimes people's con- perception of a warm-up is a, is a little bit uh, distorted. Like, mm. you know, if a warm-up goes for 15 to 20 minutes and, and at the end you are a little bit out of breath and, mm. you know, your, your heart rate's elevated, to me, that's a super good warm-up because yeah. you're really ready to do something. You know, sometimes we put in really short warm-ups mm. But they're, they're quite intense. Yeah. And then we'll put in some technical work. Like, for example, yesterday was just nine minutes and, and EMOM nice and straightforward. But, yeah. you know, I've done some of the longer warm-ups with you. You feel like you're getting so much more of a benefit than just prepping for that. Like, you, your heart rate's elevated. You're sweating a bit, which for me is a nice measure, yeah. you know, whether it's the right way or the wrong way. But yeah. you're sweating a bit and you just feel really opened up. And, you know, you and I have sometimes done it. It says four to six rounds. and We've actually done the six. Definitely, yeah. Because we feel that, you know, even if it's taken 20 minutes and that feels... Worth doing. You feel really good because... Yeah. But I think, isn't it? Isn't that a little bit of a mindset shift as well? Is that it's not, okay, I need to warm up for 10 minutes to get ready to lift that heavy bar. bar. You know, it, it's more like, okay, if this takes 20 minutes, it's going to take 20 minutes, and I know that I'm going to be in good shape for the next part. Yeah, for sure. And w- what it really covers is that that it might cover some unilateral movements. Yeah. Which, you know, sometimes I know it's okay, it's good to kind of throw that in when you're a little bit under fatigue. Yeah. But what I like is in your warm-up, you're fresh. So you're more than, okay, the first round might feel a little bit rusty, but then you're more than likely to be in, like, not just an okay position. You're going to be in a perfect position. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the side planks and stuff like that, which are usually good for finishers. Yeah. Why not put them at the start of your workouts where you're actually... Yeah. Also, so, like, right. that whole mind-muscle connection, you know, like... Yeah. Preparing the body to move in the right, like, mechanics or in the right direction and ways yeah. in the warm-up will, like, just be... A, will make it so much easier for you to move correctly when you then start snatching. Like... Yeah, definitely. For example, if, if you work out with snatches afterwards and your warm-up includes loads of whatever, it could be snatch balance from the back, it could mm-hmm. be simple like glute activation or lat activation mm-hmm. it's going to be so much easier once you get started because yeah 
the body's already in that movement pattern and yeah. like all those kind of things. It's all it's like rethinking your whole warm up. Yeah. Definitely. And maybe also thinking the warm up is not just as yeah. a preparation yeah. for something, yeah, but actually thinking say. that the warm up can be part of the training and not just to prepare you for something, but you can actually benefit from that specific little piece. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, a little strength thing or mobility thing or whatever you know, there's in that specific warm up. Yeah. Looking at it at it as, you know, there's actually gains in this. Just like we yeah, look at yeah. finishers. Like yeah, we'll absolutely. do a finisher to get better at something. Why don't we look at the warm up as yeah. almost a similar thing? Yeah. yeah I think that's that's one of the things I mean, we've always put in the class program we we have or often put in like something to do with a with a with the core, like be it some hollow rocks, be it a, be it a hollow hold or stuff. But previously, that was almost quite taboo, wasn't it? Like, yeah. why would you ever do a core movement in your warm up? Yeah. Uh, you know, the transfer on that into if you're doing a pull up or a gymnastic movement in the workout is like absolutely huge. So yeah. these maybe longer, more functional warm ups are definitely uh, something to go off. Yeah, and just also like static holds as well. Like, we've talked about it many times before, people sort of out there might think oh I don't need to do this all the time but it just yeah. gives the body such a good kind of tune up yeah. you know what I mean yeah. um, and it just works the body in you know such a different way stability yeah. wise yeah. what's your favorite exercise that has been on the program displayed f- more than once yeah. that you would recommend people start doing if they're out there in their gym and you know they're doing open gym and yep. they need one accessory exercise or it doesn't even need to be accessory just in one exercise that I've they become, can implement that's a good question I've become a pretty big fan of the half kneeling presses okay uh, the why? way you kind of why uh, just like the, the pause at the bottom the pause at the top slowing it down a little bit more yeah. like, it just makes you realise like if your body's shifting then you know maybe your midline isn't as strong as it could be yeah, yeah. Um, easy way to just to figure out you know and even like a bottoms up press yeah. where you swap the kettlebell around works stability grip strength yeah so it's a great way to identify okay look what what side is better than the other yeah another one um, which has come up a few times it's more in the warm ups just to prep the body a bit is the uh, Kang squat yeah Super I didn't good. actually know that's what the name was but we've used it before and then you yep. put it in the class and I'm like what the what hell is this and you're this? like it's that and I'm like I know ah. <laughs> so that's where the posterior chain comes into it I mean if you don't know what a Kang squat is just just YouTube that and you'll see what I'm talking about yeah um, so it's basically a good morning into a squat, squat into a good morning and then movement. getting up yeah yeah yeah. like I've always looked at that and gone how's that gonna but then when you kind of start doing it yeah. understand it a little bit yeah. more yeah, yeah it's so they're like my two kind of favorites at the moment i know everyone probably thinks it's all bench and all that but um i know there's a lot of dumbbell work with yeah. the pressing movements which is pretty cool like i don't think i touched the barbell bench press until like i, I don't know mate six seven weeks into it yeah. and i went on i tell you what my shoulders felt a, a lot you know yeah. a lot better you know yeah. pain-free it was really good so yeah um, i think that's um i think that's one thing that i've definitely noticed looking at the program watching you do it jump into a few sessions yeah for folks that haven't by the way, just a side note that haven't heard the Marcus Philly podcast that Andre did, 334, go and listen to the guy that wrote the program. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. But the thing that I've really noticed, mate, is kettlebells and dumbbells really play yeah. a massive part. Yeah. And I, I guess before as well is that people were a little bit like, oh, CrossFit's all about barbells until this year when it just wasn't. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I really think that those, that those tools are or have been 100% underused in crossfit oh definitely yeah you know? and even uh here we try to utilize them as often as yeah. much as we can yeah you know i know it gets maybe a little bit fiddly when you're getting them in and out but it, it's going to be worth it so yeah. mate carrying that into because we've seen a little transfer into yep. now you are writing the class program here and if I, folks yep. can follow that online or you can come to the class and you can see it every day jonesy is the man behind it from literally the warm-up to the stretch at the end which yes. is a new thing that we started to add in and to to explain to people that don't know we actually we go through it as a team but he is the man that writes it so we meet every two weeks to sort of go over it as a group of coaches and also to listen to what members are saying what they're liking what they're not liking and what they don't like we try and put more in of or something like that so mate, talk to us a little bit about sort of the approach that you're bringing to that programming and and, and where you stand on things i know a lot of people from the class do listen so yep. just give them an overview why they're getting what they're getting as it stands at the moment yeah i think i'm just looking at it um try not to overcomplicate things yeah. And just think, you know, just trying to keep things simple. I saw a post the other day that said something like, 
I think it was Roddy Davis, actually. I think it yeah. said, uh, simple doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. And that kind of stuck in my head. I was like, that's quite true. You know? yeah. Yeah. So basically, you're still gonna, I'm still going to look at getting people to squat you know, moderate to heavy weights a week, whether yep. that's, you know, I might put in two days of back squats sometimes, you know, but right. usually like a front squat, back squat sort of thing. Um, deadlifts, you know, and I talk about this in my article that I just wrote. I'm, yep. I'm not saying we're going to avoid heavy deadlifts, but we don't need to do that too much. You yep. know, some of the feedback we've always got, um, you know, sore backs and all that. But people need to understand that when you're doing a lot of kettlebell work, a lot of um, the Olympic lifts, which are in there a couple of times a week, you're, yep. the posterior chain is going to be getting worked. Yeah. And also just some of the warm-ups where we're just activating the glutes and everything. <laughs> yeah. So they don't need to worry about, oh, isn't it? And I guarantee you could probably, like, test your deadlift two, three times a year. And yeah, it max. should probably go up if you're, yeah. you know, yeah. um, consistent with all those other movements. Yeah. Some of the, you know, the Metcons, sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, oh, man, I could try and do this. But then I just think that's probably going to drive me crazy if I just try and perfect things. So Yeah. Again, just there's going to be shorter ones, you know, ranging up to about, I don't know, between four and eight minutes. There'll be your typical ones that last between eight to 15 minutes. Yeah. But as you know, around here, like, without being silly about it, like, it's good to go long sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think once, <laughs> maximum, maybe Sunday, twice. Sunday, 23 minute hour. 23 rounds. minutes. Smash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I think, you know, members here, they, you know, they may not like them. Uh, we get a lot of members that do actually enjoy them. Yeah. And at first, maybe they don't like them, but then they're kind of like, oh, when's this long one coming? So I think people yeah. just kind of get used to it. Yeah. So how, how does it, how do you structure the programming? Like in that one hour, what do we go through? You don't need to go into like the specific of what happens exactly on that daily program, yep. but how did, how is it build up like warm up, et cetera? Yeah, definitely. Like, so warm ups, they're going to be in there. They're going to be like 10 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes I look at warm ups and I try and. Throughout the week, I'll vary it up. So one may have a Tabata, which is 20 on 10 rest, kind of a structure. Sometimes there's going to be like, you know, an on-the-minute thing, like what we did yesterday, getting yep. the uh, P9 mats. Is that what they're yep. called? Platform. Yeah. Platform. It's not what they're called. Platform. platform. No, Proceed- Proceedus. Proceedus. Um, Proceedus. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think chucking those in there. Um, again, unilateral stuff like we've talked about. Yeah. I think that's going to be thrown in there quite a bit. Uh, and you know what? There might be just a warm-up where it, it could incorporate a little bit more cardio. Where it might be, you know, <laughs> hey, run 5K. Run 5K, come back in. One rep max back squat in a 10 minute window. I guess it really yeah. depends on, you know, what's what's coming in the next part, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So try and make it specific to what yeah. is coming in next for the strength. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's going to be a slower lift. Yep. You know, so just getting the body prepped, you know, some tempo stuff. I think that stuff is super, super important, mate. I yeah. Think for people. Especially, and it goes back, I was going to drop it in when we are talking there about posterior chain and core activation stuff. Like, I know through coaching people, when you show them a movement, especially if it's related to core, there's quite a lot of working parts that can go wrong, so they don't really feel it. Yeah. So you really have to slow it down and really coach it. It's the same in a back squat. Like, if people are not feeling their glutes after they do heavy back squat... If you're actually able to slow that movement down and start to think, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to hold in this position for two seconds, mm-hmm. it really helps people to fire those muscles. Definitely. Whereas when you're going, okay, it's five reps on the minute for 10 minutes, they're like, they want to do five reps in 10 seconds and rest for 50 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So I love that sort of breaking the movement down and also slowing it down with a different tempo. You yeah, already, when we put it in last week, I mean, you guys were coaching yep. and I, I was like watching and I just noticed so much like the mechanics from people that yeah. you know were just so much better and you found it a lot easier to kind of correct yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. and yeah. it's also a lot easier for the clients themselves to correct because yes. yeah. they'll feel if yeah. they're doing it wrong by just slowing it down you know like do yeah. a back squat 10 seconds down they'll for sure feel if they're yeah. doing something wrong yeah. in their movement it's like they can no longer rush out of bad mechanics Ba- bad positions. Yeah. yeah, you can kind of get away with bad positions when you just rush out of it. Yeah, for sure. But when everything is slowed down, you will be exposed no matter what. Yep. Yeah, and even if it means like some of the um, you know, assistance work that we do, like sometimes it's usually maybe if it was five rounds, and even if it's less rounds, and that's where us as coaches can go through like a sort of a, a trial run round at first, and then yeah. the three. So you know what weights you're kind of lifting. Yeah, and then you're going to be good for those sort of three sets. So sometimes After the less warm-up. is a bit better. Strength? Yep, yep. And strength goes into? Yeah, some, not every day, but there might be a little bit of assistance work. Like today we had split jerks, yep. and then we went some half kneeling Arnie presses, or kettlebell presses, whatever it was, yep. and another movement there. So, 
you know, that's not going to be every day, but, you know, yeah. maybe once a week we'll chuck that in there. Very good. And then we go into conditioning piece. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously there's there's time for that to happen. You're going to get pretty tired. Like, you know, some days might feel a little bit, I like to say it's a little bit different. Some people go, oh, that was a lot easier. But then the next day it's like really hard, you know. So yeah. I think just having days a little bit more balanced out yeah. is going to be, you know, crucial. Yeah, we sort of need to because like our yeah. members, they come literally every day unless we tell them not to like yeah. and we try to tell them not to come every day but <laughs> yeah so yeah. for those five days a week there needs to be some variants if not they won't survive <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly mate yeah so mate, carrying this forward i want to hop back to to another question that we were asked sure. what is the toughest workout that you ever did <sighs> i didn't want you to think too long about yeah, this no, that's no, why no, i didn't no, give no. it to you in the mate, notes I'm gonna, like, you know What's what? the hardest workout? I'm going to, in a different way, mate, I like that the 400 meter, this one that comes into mind, the 400 meter farmer's walk with body yep. weight each hand. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying, look, I know it's not for everyone, and even if you regress the weight a bit, you're still going to get a decent workout. But yeah. Like, I did that on my own. I went around the 400. I didn't do the two 200s. Yeah. So, like, that was that was a good test. How long did it take? It took about 12, 13 minutes. Really? So I thought it was going to take a while. Like, I yeah. think when I left the gym, I was like, okay, guys, I'll see you in an hour. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Like, yeah, I just kind of got to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then there's, look, look. to be honest, like there's loads of pretty much a lot of open workouts yeah, which tough. take you to yeah. those places, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're always tough. Um, but, yeah, that's something that's come Trey, to mind straight away. hardest workout you've ever done? Mm, that's hard to say. Like... It's probably a 10 minute max assault bike test. Max cal assault bike. Really? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. When I don't are you think coming and doing a 20 minute FTP test on the bike? Because it's that but double. 20 minutes. I'll do it. Uh, actually, the new one that we use is 45, and I have to hold my hand up. I have not done it yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. 45, 45 minutes. 45 minutes, all in. Whatever but you, you have to have a proper like race bike. Yeah, you've got mine over there. I think it's broken over there, isn't it? <laughs> no, mate. Just it like works. all the assault bikes downstairs. It works just fine. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to get like deep into the herd yeah. locker and yeah. your crossfitter, I think a really good benchmark would to would be to do the 10 minute max calories assault bike. Yeah. Test it out. See how I many get. You can get above 200. Then I would say that's a pretty decent score. That's a really good score. Yeah, that would be a good score. But that again, also remember that bikes <laughs> they really vary. Yeah, the so is like. A lot. Like for saying we have one bike here that's super good where I could probably hit two twenty. Yeah. And on the other bikes you go on it and it's a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. Um so I'm gonna have to say probably double grace as well. Yeah, you on did my that. behalf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah, thought about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That I had a yeah, I had a bit of a cough for a few days after that actually. Yeah, that is hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those yeah. shorter ones are tough, I think, Frank. Yeah. Obviously. I think that there's the real split, isn't it? It's like you know, if you have that massive intensity for for a yeah. very short period of time, it yeah, just, you can't beat it, can you? It's just, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely knocks you over. That yeah. gets um, that gets that mate. Another someone wants to know if you have a dictionary of the words, words. that you use. <laughs> oh, I, wish, uh, I really <laughs> John, want to get one. John eh? Brennan actually wants to. Oh, Johnny I, boy, I understand you. I understand you very very so, well. So, right. if people don't know the context here, yeah, Jonesy has his own language. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He'll call all clients of their own name <laughs> and not their original name and nickname. <laughs> and some of them make sense and some of them just, just yeah, don't. So you know, like just made up <laughs> and there's probably an explanation behind it. But that's why this question pops up. And that's why I kind of feel a bit bad, but then at the same time, it's all good. Like when I go home, people are like, oh, so have you learned the Arab language yet? And I'm like, hey, relax, I've got my own I've language. I've got my own language. And then they're like, oh. Oh, sweet. Ah. Yeah, no, that's all good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just been happening for years. I plan to continue doing it for the rest of my life. So. And new oh, members, yeah. they react well to it. They yeah. react really well. Some are a bit like, but they, they get like, used they to get it. it. Huh. They start using it with others, yeah. I don't know for a fact. Yep, yeah, they do. They get it. Yeah, they love it. Mate, sticking with the CrossFit and fitness yep. before before we wrap it up with some, some other things. Sure. Someone's asked sort of what your thoughts on the future of CrossFit are. We've seen... Some more changes recently to the structure of the games. So we're going in a team of four. We've seen a little mm. bit of reshuffle. What's your and, – and, and now 
I mean, we're talking about it there. You've moved to, to sort of this more functional bodybuilding, yeah. which don't get us wrong. That still is, to all intents and purposes, CrossFit. I've seen you do very, very yeah. typical CrossFit workouts in there. Mm-hmm. We program on a CrossFit style. But what, what's your thoughts? Where is CrossFit sort of heading to yeah, in the next I mean, few years? Yeah, in the next few years, I think it's, it's really, it really comes down to looking at how long the CrossFit athlete or games competitor has been around for. Yeah. Which is probably about, what, how long? 10 years or yeah. so? Yeah. Which yeah. isn't really that long. No. Um, look, I know when you're at that level, I think the injuries are going to pop up, like you just said before. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you do more advanced movements. You want to get better at these advanced movements, like gymnastics and ollie lifting. Yeah. If you're looking at it from, like, a fitness and general kind of health and well-being, I think if the programming is done, um, you know, smart, I think that there is still a little bit of a a good future for it there yeah but it's just about trying to get that balance which I think in 5 or 10 years time it'll be interesting to look at the programming now yeah and then look at what the programming is then do you think obviously to put to test people on things like a half kneeling upside down kettlebell press is is definitely not something we're going to see mate at the games but yeah, that's interesting yeah. how do, so how does that sort of stuff transfer or is it a lot of accessory stuff that's helping people to be stronger at the movements that we're going to see tested i think what the second thing you just said then yeah definitely like it's it's already starting to change a little bit yeah you know you see loads of people doing a little bit more bodybuilding like again go back 10 or eight years ago whatever everyone to do mat cons oh yeah definitely yeah Yeah. it was all about the the chaos kind of workouts and having no method to it whatsoever Uh, which is good to do occasionally don't get me wrong absolutely yeah yeah i think you know, a lot of people are going to use those kind of functional movements because yes. I think it's going to help all the, the main CrossFit movements at yeah. the same time. People are sort of realizing that, you know, you can't just go hard all year. You need periodization in your yeah. programming. And that whole functional bodybuilding style definitely has its place in that periodization phase. Like definitely. in three months of the year where you're not competing, you know, back to slowing everything down, yeah, back yeah. to tempo. but. Also, on the other side, you know, January hits and you want to prepare for the Open and Regionals, then you can't, you can no longer prioritize these things. Yeah. You need to be going hard. You need to be, you know, working in doing that. CrossFit. Yeah, you need to be doing what you're going to compete in. Yeah, yeah right. Um, Do you think, Jonesy, like, the, the more that people get satisfaction out of the stuff that we've been talking about, the more just moving well, still getting super strong, still yeah. being able to do stuff, do you think that also expands their sort of desire to want to do stuff like you know adventure races on the weekend yeah. and do you Definitely. think Definitely just putting your fitness to a test in a different way isn't in it in a different way yeah, yeah. yeah I think that really opens it, it'll keep people a lot more open minded yeah uh, give them more options because I, th- I think it's like I, I look at this as like I want to still be doing this when I'm 60 or 70 years old yeah you know? absolutely and I hope everyone else wants, wants that too yeah yeah. You know? so. because at the moment we don't really know whether CrossFitters you know with 20 years of of being in the sport how are they going to be in 20... Like, yeah. when I've done CrossFit... If I had a comp- like competing CrossFit for 20 years, how would my body react at that point? We yeah. we haven't done any... We don't know yet, you know, no. what's going to happen. You know, if we look at... We can see at basketball players after a full career, how their body feeling. Yeah. Um, we don't know that yet with CrossFitters, so it's going to be yeah interesting yeah. to see, you know. Definitely. Absolutely. I don't... I think... I think we'll get a lot of people... <laughs> I see at the moment, like, if you, someone was talking to me about the Meridian region and the top athletes in the Meridian region from the regional this year and literally just naming off people that have injuries. Yeah, they won't be there next year or, yeah, they're carrying this or, yeah, yeah. they're carrying that. So I think somehow we're starting to see what this, the sport, and this is where I think people, this yeah. is a really big topic, this of course. Big. But I think this is what we're, we're starting to see what the sport of CrossFit and people that really want to sort of compete at it and make it their life and train four or five hours a day, we're seeing what sort of dangers they're putting their body yeah. in. And at the same time, we're seeing a clear split from those that want to use CrossFit and s- functional strength and conditioning to be able to live like what you're saying, Jonesy, yeah. like you're not, you haven't gained any weight. No. You don't like you still enjoy life, you enjoy life more, you do more things now, you go swimming sometimes, you do yep. this sometimes, you do that sometimes. Your your array of physical activities that you're able to participate 
in mm. due to the state that your body's in is growing, right? Yeah, and so that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. Years and you could time, easily yeah. compete in a cross competition. Yeah, uh, most of like it. still if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to, yeah, and I think that's that's something super cool, mm. mate. Before we wrap it up, we've got a month or so left of this year. What could happen in that month to make 2017 a great year for you? For me, yeah. Ooh, well, I mean. Obviously, I'm enjoying the new role of um, being head of programming. Yep. You know, I think it's a new challenge for me, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, I mean, for me, look, I'm going home. That's going to be the first time I get to go home for Christmas and New Year this year. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, first, well, not first time, but first time in first eight time years. First time in a yeah, long time. time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, you know, I'm going to get to see the family, that's which is awesome. going to be cool. Get Nick to see Jones. the mates for New Year's. Yeah, he's already um, decided somewhere on the 27th we're going somewhere. Okay. Hopefully he doesn't. Because sometimes, you know, he likes to talk about things quite a bit. And, and then you get there. Really you're not disappointed, yeah, but it's yeah, like, look, 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 how about just chill out, you just yeah. shut up? <laughs> no, no. So he's organized science. That's going to be really cool. Awesome. Uh, Definitely do a, uh, do a workout. Yeah, there'll the, be workouts. Uh, in the, by the museum there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one. he took you a few locates. Yeah. I must say, he knows his locates. Yeah, he, does yeah, know he knows locates. where to go. Yeah. He knows what to wear on his feet as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old Solomons, yeah. And then, mate, leading on from that. What are you most looking forward to in 2018? You know, I'm looking forward to, you know, the new uh, girl starting. Yeah. Amanda, she yep. seems pretty clued up with the events. I think her yep. and Laura, who's yep. um, head of marketing there, she's going to work well. They're yep. going to work well together. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's going to be good structure there. And like, I just look forward to heaps of good events and um, some good promising stuff coming from all of us at Interfight there. Yeah. I think the direction's going to be awesome. And yep. Yeah. That's Looking it. Forward to it. Yeah, 2018, awesome. 41 minutes. That's Matt Jones. Wow. Boom. I think we got all the uh, all all the questions in there. Cool. Thanks, guys. That thanks awesome. for thanks for sending them in, and mate, good uh, good outlook. And uh, and I think I think sometimes in within CrossFit within fitness we get a very biased one sided. Yeah, you should be training for this. You need to be training for that. I think you've got some quite clear goals, and you yeah. know they're very different from others. But super happy with the way it's going. And yeah. as we as we sort of said, like you've changed your training, your diet's still well tuned in. You mm-hmm. eat well. That's why you stay in good shape, and you know you feel as good as you've ever felt. So yeah, yeah, I mean, happy. super cool. It's all good. Dre, any closing thoughts? No, I think it's it, it's been great seeing you progress with your training, and you know, like Marcus said having a clear goal and feeling good and just being healthy. Yeah. Most of all, just being healthy and being able to, you know, show up to the gym every day and training hard without awesome. having nickels and, and yeah, pain. definitely. Help. Awesome. That's been it. Cheers, That's the Fight Podcast. We appreciate you guys tuning in. If you want that bag of goodies, hop over to iTunes, right, and view the podcast. We will be back next week with another guest to answer your questions and to provoke your mind nice there we <laughs> go that's for you that one Jonesy thanks for, for listening folks until next time take care see you guys